everyone. It's Christine Stitch All The Things. Welcome to my video today. Um, if you're checking out my channel for the first time, this is uh, where I talk about a lot of my stitchy stuff. Uh, obviously floss tube. Um, but I talk about a lot of other things, life stuff, other crafty things. Um, this week is mainly going to be all about the stitching. Uh, for those of you who are regulars, thank you so much for coming back and uh, hanging out with me today. Um, the video is not vlog style this week. Uh, as you know, it's been off and on with that this summer, more off than on. Uh, today is Saturday, September 7th. Um, this past week, uh, the guys were working on the house all day. There was just no... Uh, the, there was no good time to record because of the banging all the time. It would have driven you guys crazy. I'm used to it now, um, so it's just sort of background noise for me, but it just is not conducive to recording a video. Uh, speaking of the video today, the lighting in here, it's a cloudy day, so the lighting is muted and probably a little cooler uh, than, than is probably... Um, pleasing to the eye, but it is what it is. I did spend some time over the weekend messing with my camera settings to see if I could stop the change in color temperature. Uh, I'm not sure if I managed it. I was trying to use a different way to record. Uh, I was trying to use OBS um, software to do all of my recording. I usually use that when I do the giveaways and you have a, the picture in the picture, so you see my screen for the giveaway winner and then I'm down in the corner, probably this corner over here. Um, that's OBS. Uh, but when I tried to set my camera up on it just to record videos regularly, when I set my camera to record as HD, there was a huge lag between the video and the audio. And I just, uh, I just stopped messing with it after probably four hours. Uh, so, the software I'm using now is just straight Windows camera. Um, the Logitech software doesn't, uh, the speaker, or the, I'm sorry, the microphone, it, it, the audio is just not very good. Uh, but the Windows camera does an okay job. The only downside is I don't get to control the color temperature. So if that goes, it, it's something that drives me crazy when I see it in playback and I try to edit it the video together so it probably drives you crazy maybe not maybe it's just a me thing but I just went off for two minutes on that and I don't have time for this today y'all I have so much amazing amazing stitchy stuff to talk about this week and so little time to do it um okay I'm gonna talk about first things first guess who's going to stitch con me that's right it's me it's me. I promise never to do that again, but I'm going to StitchCon. I got my invoice on Sunday. No, I didn't get my invoice on Sunday. I've never been to StitchCon before and certainly not last year. I got my invoice on Monday. Yeah, Monday. Uh, and I was really surprised because I thought, holy moly. I got on the wait list. I, like I was refreshing all day. Uh, when in the morning of the day the waitlist went live. Um, I set my alarm for 6 a.m. And uh, I was up at 6 a.m. refreshing until whenever it went live, 9 a.m., 9.30, my time, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and so I put my list name right on it. I, I don't know how far down the list I was, but I got on there pretty quickly. And I was, I'm thrilled, super excited. And I know I'm such a dork when I sing, so yeah. I won't ever do that again. But I was so, so, so excited. So that was the beginning of my week, y'all. The beginning of my week. I got into StitchCon. It's paid for. I'm going. Um, the mister immediately asked me, email me the dates, email me all the information, email me where we're going to be. And he went into planning mode. He spent all day planning. Um, the tentative plan is to take the motorhome there during the summer and hopefully find a place. There's not a lot of great places. He's really picky about where he parks his motorhome and what he wants there. And he doesn't, he, as picky as he is for his motorhome, he's kind of cheap when it comes to wanting to park. And um, it, there are certain places he refuses to go because they rip people off. 
and he thinks it's just really awful. Um, and so he likes to try to, he's a member of the Eagles and the Elks. So he tries to find places there. None of the Eagles or the Elks out there like have motorhome parking. There's one place in Kentucky that does but is dry camping. We are not dry camping for a week, y'all. And if you don't know what that means, it means no power, no water hookups, no sewer hookups. I mean, we dry camp when we travel. I mean, you just kind of have to, and you just use the uh, tanks, the generator stuff as you can. But in the summer, you're not dry camping for a week unless you just desperate, I guess. Anyway, so we may not end up taking that out there. So what he did is he made reservations at, uh, and we're not supposed to make reservations yet, but I don't think you're supposed to make reservations if you're wanting to stay at the Hyatt, which is right next to the convention center, or if you want to stay at the La Quinta, because those are the two places I think Pam and Steph and Barbara and everybody got um, uh, room blocks for. But um, we do have a ton of Marriott points, and I think there's a Fairfield Inn, I think it's Fairfield, that's right like across the street and down like a block, maybe, maybe half a block. It's like there across the street is another hotel place and then there's a parking lot that separ separates that motel from the Fairfield Inn. So he got a place there because we got a bunch of Marriott points. Um, so yeah, that's the backup plan. He's already got a room reserved. He told me I wanna make sure that you get there. Uh, but because of that, uh, we're only gonna be staying I think we get in on the 10th is the reservation and we leave the 14th. So not a lot of extra time there, um, but it doesn't matter. Guess who's going to StitchCon? Me. That's right. It's me. I promised I would never do that again. Oh, I'm so excited about that. Okay. So that was Monday. Was that? Yeah. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, I made bags. Uh, I got, um, no, Tuesday... Monday, Tuesday, I cut out, prepped all the bags, and sewed four of them Wednesday, and I took Thursday off. You know why? Because I went to Acorns and Threads, y'all, for the Stitchy Meetup, and holy moly, it was packed. I told the mister, last time we, I got there at one, the meetup is one to four, officially. Mm -mm. The meetup, when I got there last time, like I was late. I got there a few minutes to one, I think. 12.30 maybe, 12.45, I was totally late. Like everybody was there um, and lots of seats were taken up. So this time I told him I wanna leave by 9.30, no later than 9.30 because I had a bunch of shopping to do and we're gonna get into that y'all. This whole first part of this video, I should say, is just gonna be all stitchy things. Maybe I said it already, I have so much in my brain. Um, and all the life stuff, everything's going to be at the end. That way, if you don't want to hear, if you're just here for stitching and, and stitchy meetups and stitchy haul and stitchy stuff, you don't have to listen to the stuff at the end. Everything else is going to be at the end. Okay, so we left at 930 and we got there in exactly an hour, which is pretty good. Traffic was with us. I brought a chair. I brought a chair from here because I wanted a guaranteed place to sit because I remember how full it was last month and then I kept seeing how many people said they were coming. So many people. And so I thought, I'm bringing a chair because I'm, I'm gonna make sure I have a seat. But I didn't bring it in at first. I went in and I'm like, I have a chair, is it okay? And Janine and Joe Lynn are like, yes, go bring your chair. Uh, Cause we're gonna need it. Y'all, they expanded the table section when I was there at least twice, maybe three times. And they were grabbing chairs from it everywhere. Someone else brought a chair. I can't remember who it was. I'm sorry, I just popped my lips. Um, I, I don't know, but someone else brought a chair too. So, I mean, we were packed in like sardines around there, but I had shopping to do, y'all. I spent two hours once I got there. Uh, I was on a mission, and we're gonna talk about that when I get to the city hall, but two hours, at least two hours, of, of doing some shopping, um, some thread conversion and stuff like that. But it was so exciting to be there. I was so busy. I really was focused on that, that I missed a lot of people coming in. Uh, I was probably really rude because I didn't stop and say hi to anybody at first until Daylene got there. Daylene, so grateful. And I was so excited. I stopped everything. Now she's hugging Janine.
That's my next door neighbor. He's rebuilding a Mustang. It's rotted out. He's a mechanic. I heard banging all week long and now I gotta listen to him bang right now. Okay. I hope that wasn't too loud for you guys. Okay, so anyway, Daylene's hugging Audrey. And I run up like a kindergartner who just saw we're having chocolate cake for snack time. And I'm like clapping and like, Daylene! And like made everybody go away so I could hug Daylene. <laughs> it was so rude. I did some rude things. We're gonna talk about those. But I was so excited to see Daylene. I think I'll just have to edit some of that stuff out. Uh, so Daylene and I, we chatted for a while. She gave me a little gift. I'll, I'll talk about that. I gave her a little gift. Um, and, and then we ended up doing some shopping. She was just amazing to talk to. Um, Shell, Stitchy Shell, I forgot exactly her Instagram name because I've confused her with another Stitchy Shell that <laughs> lives in England <laughs> or the UK. Um, uh, she came. She didn't come last year. I was really hoping to see her again. And she came this, this time, last year, last month. She came this time. I was super excited to see her. Um, I got to meet Tracy Jordan. Uh, she was funny because I was over by the fabrics um, and she came around. She's like, Are you, you're stitch all the things. And I was laughing. I was like, yeah. She's like, I recognize your voice. Oh my goodness. I talk so much, right? And apparently <laughs> my voice is very recognizable. Anyway, she was a delight to me. I didn't get to chat with her as long as I wanted, um, but I did go later around. She was sitting next to Melissa Johnson. Um, and Melissa Johnson is Melissa J and a whole bunch of numbers, not a whole bunch, like four, um, but I can't remember what they are. So I'll have them up there on Instagram. Uh, so I got to see Melissa and meet Melissa. Um, I got to meet Rebecca Murphy and her sister Rachel. They came down from Washington. Rebecca is fantastic. It was so nice to meet her and her sister. Um, I got to meet Emmy um, and she has a floss tube and I didn't even know. And I don't even know the name right now. Someone just mentioned she has a floss tube and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to make sure that I go subscribe and I never did. So I'll do some research and I'll have her name up there. Um, she was a delight. Um, love to talk to her. Everyone's a delight. Everyone's lovely. I must say those words a lot. He is not a delight nor lovely at this point in time. He's a really nice guy. He works so hard. He works all week and then he comes home and works all weekend. He is, he's, they're really great people. I just, you know, trying to record bang, 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 bang. Okay. Um, who else was there? So many people. Cricket Bug 33, I think that's um Instagram name. Got to meet her. Um I met uh well Darlene was there. Uh, I love Darlene. She's fantastic. Um chit chat. We everybody's always chit chatting, right? Audrey Stitchy which 42, obviously, uh Michelle Bendy, uh Lori, um Lori McCleary, she's tech stylist. Um, and then of course, Lisa Smith, uh, they came down this time. I was so happy to see them because um, that's a bit of a drive for them. So that was really great that they came down. Um, uh, so many more people. There were so many people. Steph, did I say Steph? Stitch goes my heart. She's fantastic. I love her. You have to watch her last video because um, she talks about a fire and I was like horrified for her for the fire and like the situation she was in and smiling and laughing all at the same time because I it would have been me. That would have exactly been me and I would have done exactly the same things. Um, of course, Erin, uh, to Martini Stitcher, she's fantastic. Love her. Flung all of my, I went to go tell her to, I wanted to take a selfie and so she's sitting down and I'm standing up. So, um, I got my camera up and I turned and I flung all of my hair right into her face, like smacked her right in the face. <laughs> it was terrible, terrible. Mm. Okay, I know I'm missing so many people. Um, uh, I do know um, it, uh, Anna couldn't come. Anna wasn't there of... Um, 
um, Stitch Rody. Uh, she had a wedding for her son she had to get ready for. Margaret came. Margaret also had a wedding, but she was like, I'm going anyway. And so she came for a few hours with Jennifer. Um, oh, anyway, lots of people. Lots of people. I miss Colette. I missed Lisa Gomez. Um, she's Miss Chief Stitch. She wasn't feeling well, and I meant to message her, and I didn't. So, Lisa, if you see this before I message you, I missed you. Uh, I hope I hope you're feeling better by October 1 and, and you'll be able to go. Um, anyway, it was just a fantastic day. Um, so much going on. Uh, probably one of the, the two probably worst moments for me as per usual. Um, I, I remembered to ask Michelle Bendy to sign my charts. Okay? I remembered, got her to sign my charts. This one, uh, her writing is so teeny tiny, I can't even see it. Um, okay, it's not going to focus. Um, I got to get my glasses on because she's so sweet. Okay, the very first one she signed was this one, her Alice's Mad Plant. And she said, Christine, move to Oregon, please. Love, Michelle. Yeah, I want to do that. And then I had her sign, because I gave them to her out of order. Um, I had her sign love. And this one, she says, I'm going to miss stitching with underline you. Love, Michelle. And when I saw that one, I got a little teary-eyed. I was like, oh, and walked away uh, before she could see me cry. Uh, now, Dawn, um, Frosty X Stitch Dawn. Hi, Dawn. She's the one who told me on the last one, you know, you could set up a reminder in your phone so it'll go off when you're there and you won't forget. Because the last time I was with Michelle at a Stitchy meetup um, at Starlight Stitchery, I forgot to ask her. And I was like, that's a fantastic idea. And I told on that. And instead of immediately going to my phone and putting it in, I just forgot to put that in. Great idea though, Dawn, if I'd have followed through. So I'm walking around shopping and Rebecca, she's like, hey, are you gonna ask, did you ask Michelle or are you gonna ask Michelle to sign your charts? And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do that. And she's like, oh good, because when you do it, I'm gonna ask her to sign mine. So we go and we like corner Michelle <laughs> and tell her to sign our charts. So she signs mine, she starts signing Rebecca's. And at the time I hadn't like officially introduced myself or gotten Rebecca's name. I just knew it was Rebecca. So um, I said, you know, you're Rebecca, right? Yeah, I'm Christine. And I gave her a hug. Now Michelle is in between us. I'm standing on this side. Here's Michelle, she's bent over, signing her charts on a table and Rebecca's on the other side. So what do I do? I said, oh, I'm gonna hug you over, Michelle. Cause that's what you do, right? Like Michelle's like already hunched over and now she's trying to hunch over more as I'm hugging Rebecca over the top of Michelle. Who does that to people? Me. Like I could not be a more awkward person. Another time I was meeting someone else. Uh, this is like a twofer actually. I was meeting, I'm not going to name names here because it was an interesting situation. I was meeting one of the ladies and, and she was talking about, you know, I'm kind of abrasive, gruff. Those weren't really the words she was using, but just kind of like a, I, I can't remember. And we got to talking uh, and there was another person standing there, a very sweet, kind person. And I forgot myself. And I'm talking about a conversation I had with Josh. And I just, like in the space of five seconds, spewed out three really bad words. All the same word, repeated. And, and the person I was talking to was like, oh, okay. So, you know, maybe you're a little that way too. Whatever the description she was. Uh, rough, I can't re remember. Now the third person was like, oh, Oh my, <laughs> and not offended at all, but just like, oh, that's, you know, I don't know, kind of like, uh, that's a little, it just reminded me, her reaction was very kind and sweet, but then I was just like, hello, what are you doing? Like just spewing out these words. You're, you're in mixed company right now. You, this is just not the place. So I was apologizing and then as that conversation ended, here's the twofer. Um, I'm so awkward at this point <laughs> that I didn't, you know, most people say, okay, you know, I'll talk to you later. It was nice meeting you. I, I said, okay, I'll talk to you later. Thank you for letting me meet you. 
Because <laughs> that's what you say to people, right? And Daylene was behind this counter with all these charts. And she heard me say that. And she popped her head around. She's laughing so hard. Because you don't say that to people. That's not what you say when you're like, it was nice to meet you. Thank you for letting me meet you. It, that's me. I'm probably going to say that to 500 people at StitchCon. Thank you for letting me meet you. Okay. Um, 21 minutes and, and I don't even know that I've gotten anywhere. Um, the day was fantastic. I ended up, I brought a chair so I'd have a guaranteed place to sit. Uh, but I ended up shopping and just standing up on purpose because there was a lot of people coming in um, I'd never seen before. And granted, that was only my third time at Acorns and Threads. But I think it was, uh, I don't know that it's normal to have so many people there for the first Thursday stitchy meetup. Um, and I just, you know, I, I'm, I need to walk around anyway. I, I sit all day when I'm sewing, so it was good for me. So I just grabbed my stitching and walked around and talked to people. And I'm looking around for my stitching to see, oh, here it is. No, it's not. It's right here. Okay, so what I would do, what I decided to do, I decided to copy Michelle Garrett and take a page out of her book. And y'all know I'm looking for my board, right? Which I can never find. I took a page out of Michelle Bendy's book and I decided to just carry my stitching around with me and stitch in hand while I went and talked to people. So I'm, Seize the Day is my tra stitchy travel piece. So if I'm, on, if I'm in the car and we're driving any length of time, I stitch on this. And so I stitch in the car on the way up and I stitch there with this. I stitched more in the car on the way up than I did there. Uh, and I started this sandcastle. So I got this flag, the pole, and half of the sandcastle done in the car. And then um, probably this much I got done at Acorns and Threads. Just this little bottom part. Yeah, that's it. Um, but this is what I stitched on, Seize the Day. This is a stitch along by um, uh, Caterpillar uh, Cross Stitch out of the UK. Uh, she sent me this kit to stitch on this. I am terribly far behind. Um, I just, right now I'm just stitching on it when I can. Uh, so that's what I stitched on while we were there. If you want to see a video of everyone who was there, I probably could have shortened this whole time by simply saying go to Audrey Stitchy Witch 42's channel because she put, uh, it's a short little, I think it's like eight minute video of everyone there. Um, and they'll introduce themselves and talk about what they were, um, uh, talking about. Um, so that's, that, that was a stitchy meetup. I just, such a goofball. I can't wait till next time. And hopefully people will just be like, mm, that's Christine. At some point after you meet me, you get to be like, mm, that's Christine. Yeah. Awkward says the wrong thing all the time. Occasionally spits out the words that she shouldn't. That's me. Um, okay, so what did I buy at Acorns and Threads? First off, when I got there, Michelle Bendy Stitchy had um, some of her new patterns out. And I got two of them because <sighs> the lighting in here and I, I didn't take them out of the plastic. I'm so sorry. Okay, this is Hildy's brew. Look at Hildy. I'm trying to hold it up to where you can see the pattern and not the camera shadow. I love this so much. Look at Hildy. Hildy is amazing. Um, now, what I should have done was bought some fabric and flosses to stitch this. But I was, I was focused on a particular mission, which we're going to talk about. And um, I'm finally getting there, y'all. And I... I I just grabbed these patterns and then it just went out of my mind that I should get flosses to stitch them. The next Michelle Bendy pattern, I, I need to stitch this fast. The next time I go to Acorns, I'm actually buying fabric and the flosses for this. It's a Christmas pattern, Noel. I love it. Look at that cup, the Starbucks cup. 
It looks like a Starbucks cup. I don't even know if that's supposed to be a Starbucks cup. Um, but it's adorable. I love it. Uh, yeah. And that is going to be, that's such a cute, cute pattern. Now, a smart person would have asked Michelle Bendy to sign these too. But um, I already felt bad and bothered her over the last two. So I don't want to like bother her again. Uh, and then, of course, you know, that awkward moment hugging over her. The last pattern I bought, I saw this when Beth Twist talked about it on her video and she introduced her new patterns. Um, she has a new wedding sampler I really wanted, uh, but I decided to wait on that. Um, and then she uh, showed this Biscornu. And it's called the Brown Bird Biscornu. Bis Biscornu. Say that five times fast. Um, a normal person probably could, not me. And I love it so much because she purposefully designed this. That could focus. To where she purposefully designed this to where every element of the Biscornu had stitching, including the, the corners right there. It was purposefully done so that all parts of the Biscornu had stitching on it. I love the colors. Um, it's the red. I have discovered if there's something with red on, on it as far as stitching goes, especially samplers, my heart goes, <sighs> and I go, <sighs> yeah, we're going to talk about that too. Um, I don't have any more patterns to show you yet. Actually, we're going to talk about that next week. Anyway. Okay, stop. I'm getting all sidetracked. Yes, I have fabric for this, but also I'm going to pick up flosses. Totally got sidetracked and forgot to do that. Um, the fabric I got, um, no, I'll, I'll go into that later. Uh, so yeah, I think though that I'm just going to go ahead and buy DMC for this uh, because I'm going to, I end up spending a lot on like overdyes and stuff. And sometimes I just, I just don't want to. I just, I would just rather have the DMC um, because it's cheaper. I can get it kitted up faster and it's not going to hit my bank account hard. You know what I mean? Okay. Now, I went to Acorns and Threads. I got a story for y'all. I know we're 30 minutes in here. I got a story for you. I received as a gift from Lee in Australia uh, the the hands across the sea pattern jennifer gilbert 1818 1818 1819 anyway jennifer gilbert is my favorite hands across the sea pattern i saw that and immediately was like i really need to stitch that and i mentioned it in a floss tube video a while a, a, a ways back probably in the first few months i started and she asked me she sent me a message. She says, I have that. I'd love to send it to you. And I'm like, oh, that'd be great. And then I realized she was in Australia. Y'all, she sent me that a pattern for free from Australia. A hands across the sea pattern. So anyway, Jennifer Gilbert um, has been one that I've been wanting to start for a long time. Now, all y'all out there doing your sampler videos and then doing sampler September had me like, okay, I'm going to go to Acorns and I'm gonna get Jennifer Gilbert kitted up and ready to go. And I'm gonna be starting her. I also ended up um, asking Janine to order a chart for me because of Sampler September and me browsing websites and I can't find it. I couldn't find it, this chart anywhere. And when it gets in um, and I get it, I'll tell you which one it is. Um, so I asked her to order it for me and it's got some red. Um, and I ended up on, I also had seen, I don't know if I should talk about it in this video. Yeah, I will in a minute. Okay, anyway, I don't know why I got sidetracked there. But uh, I know, because Sampler September, I've gone, I'm going a little crazy about that, y'all. So I'm at Acorns. Now, all of the Jennifer Gilbert Flosses are all Avera Soie, Soie d'Alger. I think that's how you say that. One of you helped me find that, how to say it. Uh, and I think that's it. And so I decided I'm going to go there. I'm going to 
pick up all of those silks and then go to the over dyed section and uh, get similar colors. I'm just gonna do a conversion with over dyed. So I spent probably an hour, hour and a half doing exactly that. I took all the silks, converted them over, really good close matches. I set them all on the table and I had um, the chart from Acorns and Threads there. Set them on the table and I realized these do not match the picture on the chart at all, at all. There was a forest green I could not, that I, I'm looking at, it was like a dark olive green or something like that. There's no green. Now he's grinding. I've heard that all week too on my house. Okay, I, I'm just gonna keep going. I hope, I hope it's not as loud for you. If it is, I'm really sorry. I, this is why I didn't record all week. Okay, I'm not gonna complain. Life is good, life is amazing. Anyway, I sat down all those flosses and realized these don't match. For screen, I'm gonna put the chart up somewhere, maybe even over my face. Do you see a green on this picture anywhere? There's no green. And I'm looking at the flosses and I'm looking at the picture and I, I was, I was so disappointed. This is my rant. I shouldn't rant because I totally appreciate all the hard work all of you designers do to design the charts, take the pictures, get them stitched, put the pattern out there. But please, when you tweak your pictures, if the colors change, I don't want the tweak. Like I do not want to be able to see the stitching better or I don't want the lighting brighter if it changes the colors in the picture from what they really, really are. Because the sampler did not look anything like the flosses I had pulled. I showed it, I was at the floss wall. I hogged the space in front of the, the Gentle Arts and the Classic Color Works for, the, for like two hours, going back and forth. Um, and, and Daylene, I went up for like my hundredth time from going back and looking at the flosses at the table, going back up to the wall. And she's like, are you having fun? And I'm like, I'm frustrated. And she's like, oh, whoa. <laughs> and I told her, I, I it wasn't frustrated. I'm disappointed. I'm upset, something like that. And I told, I showed her the picture and she's like, those, no, those are not the same colors at all. Well, what I loved about the Jennifer Gilbert sample sampler was the colors on the front page. So I said, I, I think I need to find these colors I need to do all my searching based off these colors right here on this. I just need to look at the picture and find the, the flosses. And she agreed, but she says, okay, you need to put back the flosses that you got because you're still looking at those colors and trying, you're comparing, you need to start fresh. So I put all the flosses back. I put the Swal d'Alger back, I put everything back and I started fresh. And these are the colors that I picked. First off, I bought fabric. Um, the fabric I chose, and I've said this before, is Weathered Shingles by, um, I think it's R&R. &R. Yeah, R&R &R Linen is my favorite, fa well, it's not my favorite, it's one of my two favorites fabrics. Platinum is my favorite, and then Weathered Shingles. Weathered Shingles is the perfect gray and beige in one. That's pretty accurate. So they call it grage, uh, G-R-E-I-G-E. -E. Gray and beige is one, this is it. I absolutely love this fabric. Um, and especially when you see it, because there are some flosses, like I love platinum for a lot of just uh, neutral behind, behind floss colors. But when you get some of these flosses that are uh, like off white or a little bit of a beige, you need them to kind of pop off. And if I put this against platinum, it, it wouldn't really show up very much. What is that? That is, yeah, onion, onion skin. And here you can definitely see them. So I chose this. Um, these are the flosses I decided to go with 
for this sampler because these are the colors. Oh, that's the same one. I got duplicates. I need to stop putting the duplicates up. I'm having a hard time because of the light. I can't see. My glasses aren't on. Um, yeah. I think these are honestly the colors that I see in that picture. And if I can have these up side by side with the pictures, maybe that'll make sense to you. Um, maybe you may agree. I don't know that it looks okay. The one thing I liked the most was the, was the, like the purpley pinks. So these are the colors that I got. Uh, let me try to move these over here. I'm trying to see at the same time and then have room for the picture of the sampler up beside it. I don't know if that blows out all the color. Okay. So then last night, I was sitting there thinking, did I make a mistake by trying to do my own conversion? What if they don't look so good? And then I was thinking, I didn't, I didn't take a picture of the original Avera Soise to show you the difference. So last night, I was on one, two, three stitch. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, how many times do I tell you every year, I don't do ornaments, I don't wanna do ornaments, I, ornaments aren't my thing, and I spent three hours last night looking at stocking ornaments, the mini stocking ornaments. Like, I'm obsessed with mini stockings right now. Obsessed. I had seen, I, I had the Home for the Holidays by Blackbird's Designs, and I had uh, I'd recently seen someone someone or a picture of all of the stockings in the series uh, because they've got like a whole like sampler stocking things from A. There's like three letters of the alphabet on each stocking, something like that. And I'm like, I, I have to stitch those. And um, Abby Rose, Abby Lane Designs, I forget what it is. She's got some stockings too. She's got a three uh, sampler stocking series as well. Stocking one, two, and three. I ordered those last night. I had a whole bunch of stockings in my cart, including several of the Blackbird Designs Christmas ones, like the December, Merry December or something. I took them out. I'm like, just calm down. You've already got some. Get those stitched. Decide if you even want like stockings before you order more. And I still ordered the Abby Lane, Abby Rose Designs stockings last night. But because I ordered those, I ordered the DMC conversion of Jennifer Gilbert to get here and see if this was the right decision. After two hours, I, I was really frustrated. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do these. I got this, I got the fabric. I'm excited, it's all kitted up. I can't wait to go home and start. I'm excited, super excited. So I go, I pay for all my purchases. I'm not done showing you. Um, I got a few other things. Um, and I sit down and I'm starting to stitch and then it dawns on me. You don't have your chart. It's in Arizona. My chart, Jennifer Gilbert, is in Arizona. Now normally I scan my charts in because I like to go in between the chart and uh, either paper and PDF uh, on my computer. Uh, most times I, I end up printing it out from the that so that I can mark it off. But there are times when I don't have my chart with me and I can refer to my my um, my drive and, and have it. So no matter where I am, I have it. But I didn't I didn't scan in my hat chart because I didn't want to crease the book quite. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know us stitchers, we're ready to start. What do you do? Do you buy another chart? Now, I'm, I'm talking about this out loud. I'm saying how disappointed I am. And most stitchers are going to say, go buy another chart because they're 10, 15 bucks max. And a few people overheard the last part of the conversation. And there's like, they're like, just go, just go buy one. Which one is it? And then I said, it's the hands across the sea. And everybody went, oh. 
I didn't buy it. I was this close and then I'm like, be reasonable, Christine. Why are you going to go over there and buy that chart? I, I thought it was 36. I think it's 32. But still, why are you going to plop down $32? And then I thought, oh, but then you can benefit all the people on, fl on FlossTube when you give it away. Sorry, y'all. I said no. I just, I just sat there for a minute and just thought, you're going to be back in Arizona in like a month and a half. You can wait. So my sampler September start has to wait. And then I'll show you next week. I'll compare those again when the DMC gets here from one, two, three stitch. And I'll show you what the, because the DMC I was looking, I pulled a few of Verisois and, and matched the DMC there. A lot of them are really, really close. So I, I know the DMCs will be really close to what the sampler is supposed to look like. But do any of you feel me on that? Like when you get the picture and you see the picture on the pattern and then you get the fabric and the flosses and they look nothing alike. And you're like, what, what happened here? Like, am I alone? I have a bit of a headache, which is why I keep, I'm so sorry. I keep doing that and then the banging and the drilling. Um, am I alone in this? Or do you also get frustrated when when you pick up the fabric and the flosses and you realize it doesn't look anything like the picture. Like I want to just say, please stop editing your pictures so much that the colors change. Like brighten them, highlight them, remove some shadows if you want. But the minute you start messing with the color temperature, please stop. That is not fair to stitchers. I'm probably feeling a bit salty. I, I'm in a good mood though, y'all. I'm in a good mood. Okay. So the other thing I, or I keep dropping my cardboard down. The other thing I bought were two skeins of DMC to go in my, uh, in some of the bags cause I didn't buy enough DMC to go out with the bags I ordered. I ordered, I got a red one and a blue one, but I can't find the blue one. I think I dropped it or left it there or something. Um, so someone's not going to get a skein of floss or I'm going to have to, scrounge around see if I have a brand new skein of something somewhere okay and the other thing I got I need to stop making eyes about that guy about my neighbor Stan his name's Stan he's nice are two button hearts Ugh, stars two mini button stars that's either the mister or the kids sorry and then these three gentle arts because I converted these from weeks and you ask why, you're gonna find out next week. Because I don't wanna talk about it too soon. I have something coming from 123 Stitch. Yes, I have two orders coming from 123 Stitch. I just got the shipping notice um, for this. And when that order gets in, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story behind how I ended up with that chart, these flosses that I converted from weeks and the rest of the, the kit for that one and a second chart. Mm -hmm. I normally don't have haul y'all, <laughs> haul y'all, but um, uh, I, I do have some coming. Okay, so that is the last of my acorns and threads day. <clears throat> I took the whole day off work off work. I mean, we were there the whole day. We didn't get home till like seven or so. Um, and, and I didn't do any work that day. So I actually have to work today. I've been talking for 45 minutes. I'm supposed to be sewing. I have two bags I have to get done today, but my husband decided he's going to go thrift. And I said, I'm going to record while you're gone. Um, uh, the other thing that we got that day, and it was actually the mister is the Dignitet curtain wire for my zippers. Because uh, when I brought my zippers up here, if you remember from the Havasu house, my zippers are hanging on a wire. It's this wire. When I brought them here, I just, I kept them on their hooks. Oh, I just dropped a bunch. I kept them on their hooks, but I, I told them I don't want to put a wire up here uh, at all. And I just threw these in a drawer. But I was having the worst time. Like I kept wading through the drawer and then I ended up uh, draping them over uh, the banister here for the stairs, which is where I just pulled these from. Oh, sorry for all the noise. But that's not, 
convenient either. So then I told him, Mr. I want to hang this wire right up here. So he went, I asked him, are you going to go to Ikea? And he goes, no, that's way up in North Portland. I'm not going up there. Pfft, have hair. He says, I'm not going up there. It's going to take me too long. And I was like, oh, no problem. I'll just order it. Um, if you're not going to be up that way, not a problem. Uh, he comes in to Acorns and Threads to pick me up in the evening. And he's like, I decided to go up to Ikea. <laughs> and and Joe Lynn was like, uh oh, and he's like, I took the highway. It took me like 45 minutes to get up there, 45 minutes to get back. And Joe Lynn's like, you should have came in here. I would have told you where to go without getting on any of the freeways. So he knows now before he goes anywhere in, in Portland, he needs to come in and talk to Joe Lynn. He said that he's all next time I want to go anywhere. I'm going to go talk to Joe Lynn. Okay. So when I got home, I had the most, Oh, I need to tell you before I go on. Okay, this was from Daily. We are now in the stitchy kindness portion of the video. That was like acorns and threads and haul all in one and a whole lot of jabber. Uh, and now, stitchy kindness. And this one was from Daily. Now, here's the thing. Okay, there's always a story, right? This video is gonna be so long. I'm so sorry, you guys, y'all. Um, this is how the thing with Daylene worked out. Elena B on her last video was talking about how much she loved Daylene, how much she can't wait to meet Daylene, and just having a Daylene love fest, as one should, because Daylene is amazing. So grateful. So I, being the ever polite and never rude or socially awkward person, jumped on Elena's video or comments where she and Daylene were continuing the love fest and said, I get to meet Daylene next week because that's not rude at all to be like, you know that one person you want to meet more than anything, I'm going to meet her next week. And then I said to Daylene, who, who was like, oh, I'm so excited to get to meet you. That's so nice. Um, I said, bring pickles because that's not rude at all either, right? Uh, and that comes from Elena in the video saying how much she wanted to have some of Daylene's pickles. So not only did I get on there and say that um, I get to meet the one person that you want to meet, I also am having her bring me pickles. I'm pretty sure at this point, my B sister card has been revoked. Pretty sure because it just was so not nice at all. <laughs> Such a terrible person. Okay, so, so anyway, actually, the more you think about it, it's kind of something a sister would do, right? Kind of horn in on what you're doing there and be like, I got to do it for you. That's exactly something a sister would do. Maybe I just leveled up as a B sister. I think I'm gonna go with that. Like maybe now I officially have my B sister card. It's probably been revoked. Okay, so I met Daylene. Daylene comes in, she brings this big old bag. Now I didn't bring everything up in it because she actually brought me food that she grew herself. The woman grew from nothing food for me to consume. It was like, it's the best gift ever. And it is currently in my fridge. Uh, and I'm not bringing it up here because half of it's going to be eaten tonight. All right. Oh my good Lord. Okay. So in this bag, here's the tag. It says, do not underline three times open this. Do not open this package anywhere near fabric, thread, LNS, sewing room, linen, project bags, crochet, knitting, quilting, patterns, books. I am serious. Yeah. And so I know what she's talking about. Um, she's talking about this right here. What is it? It is a jar of pickles, dill pickles. And it says, again, here, do not open near any underlined fabric, thread, linen, quilting, sewing, crochet, knitting, or LNS, and a smiley face. 
Okay. This jar of pickles, I haven't, I haven't, I have followed the instructions. I am currently near half of those things. Quilting, project bags, fabric, sewing. It's all right here. The only thing I'm missing is the LNS crochet and knitting maybe. Uh, she has it wrapped in bubble wrap and this with twine. I, and I can tell the lid either has a ribbon or the lid is a gingham sort of, uh, it's probably a gingham ribbon. I, ha I, I don't know, I haven't opened it. I've been waiting to show it on this video. I'm going to carefully put it back in the bag, Daylene, not open the bubble wrap. I am dying to eat these pickles, y'all. Dill. She asked me, dill or bread and butter? Dill. Dill. So I'm going to carefully put this back in the bag. Uh, she brought me fresh tomatoes, a cucumber. My husband was so excited because I've not been able to grow anything. I am the black thumb. I am the grim reaper of death to all plants around. Like they see me coming and they literally shrink away. Uh, so I, I can't grow anything. And our neighbor has brought us cucumber and tomatoes and I've been making us fresh cucumber and tomato salad every day. And we ran out. And like, we can't go knock on the neighbor's door and be like, do you have more fresh cucumbers and tomatoes? Cause they're delicious. Uh, Daylene gave us fresh cucumber and tomatoes. My husband was so excited. Also zucchini, that's all for me. Brad doesn't like zucchini, I love it. I'm making that tonight. I cannot wait. Uh, it's just so delicious. But then she had a present for him and it was all wrapped up. And it says to Brad, made in the town next door to us, Love Daylene and Mr. Wright. And then on the back it says, um, hang on. Cause giving sweets to your boyfriend is a thing us floss tube girls do. To my boyfriend, not her boyfriend, my boyfriend. My boyfriend, my mister. Okay, so then her and Mr. Wright's like, why are we giving this thing? I didn't know what it was, Daylene was telling me. And, and I'm gonna paraphrase cause I don't remember exactly, but he was like, why are we giving um, that mister anything? And she's like, Cause that, that's, that's, we, we do that. That's what we have to do. And he was like, okay. So now I have to go give her Mr. Something. And I asked, I have to give Mr. Wright, I have to send Mr. Wright a package. Cause he's like, oh, uh, I didn't know this is the thing we do for the Mr. My Mr. Uh, so Mr. Wright needs one. And so I asked her, what does Mr. Wright like? What kind of snack? What kind of treat? And she says, you know, just a plain Hershey bar. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go find a jumbo size Hershey bar. And anyway, I get to send Mr. Wright chocolate. And then I went, oh, a chocolate Christine. Like there's chocolate Jen. I get to be the Mr. Wright's chocolate Christine. Brad has chocolate Jen, and I have to be the chocolate Christine for Mr. Wright. Although chocolate Jen, this chocolate is Jen's thing. Not really mine, but so uh, again, rudely horning in on somebody else's thing. There you go, that's me. So, my mister has this package, it's all heavy. It's heavy, it's big. I'm like, what is that? And so he opens it up from the top. I'm standing on the other side of the table and he looks in and he goes, oh, like eyes lit up. And I was like, oh, what is in there? Like what on earth? And then he lifts this up out of the package. You all, y'all, that is a formal, Y'all, you all, they sent him, they gifted him a massive, massive tin of almond roca. His eyes were this big all night. Like, I get to eat this almond roca. He tore into this bag faster than I've ever seen anybody tear into anything. Faster than a five-year-old at Christmas tearing all his presents open and started eating almond roca. And then he's like, you want some? Like mouthful, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, uh, no, Weight Watchers. I'm like, that's probably 25 points. I can't eat that. Like I'm dying to eat that. I wanna eat that, can't eat that. He's been eating almond roca for two days straight. This thing is gonna be gone and all the 15 pounds he lost, he's gonna gain back. Not me, I'm not eating almond roca. I love almond roca, I'm not eating almond roca. So Daylene, thank you so much. He loves it. I love it. I love everything. The fact that you gave me fruit, veggies from your bounty, 
Your bountiful harvest is everything. I totally love it. Thank you so much. I got home. Like, I thought that stitchy day, my heart was over full, and then I got home. And then it was like, no, here's more blessings for your cup. It's not overflowing enough. Like, uh, my cup is so full, like I could fill 500 other people's cups. Um, and I received a package from Patience, and she left me a lovely note. Um, and she had sent me two charts. Um, this was one that she had stitched, I do believe. And she had some, or maybe she used the fabric front. And she had um, the floss and the chart left. And she sent it to me because she knows I love sugar skulls. And this is an artiste. And I know my camera's not focusing. It's fantastic. And then she had um, purchased and had printed and sent to her the an artisy pattern, y'all. Because she thought of me. The artisy sugar skull i it's amazing amazing so i am going to have to get that kitted up as well thank you so much patience i love these okay so then i had on my porch when i got home sorry i bent down a huge package i want to make sure the address side is not showing and i was like what is this and it was a ups it wasn't a thing uh a uh, uh, post office, so I didn't have, anyway, it doesn't matter. I had received a thank you card from Sheila. I'm not gonna say last names because I don't have permission yet. Um, but she, I, I did something super small, like n something anybody would have done for anybody else, just a little guidance with getting a technical thing set up. And she sent me the most amazing thank you gift for that. I I was overwhelmed. First of all, every single one of her package had these butterflies on it. Oops. Oh, a little butterfly sticker, which you know I love. Um, I opened one package, it's mango berry tea. Tea bags, big two quart tea bags, so I can make iced tea with. I went to make iced tea yesterday. I sent her a message, said I was super excited I was going to make it the next day and I didn't get to do it because we got some some news about the the house that kind of that just kind of changed the direction of our day. Um, and so I just didn't have time. So and now it's a cloudy day, but that's okay. I got to make some iced tea. It's mango berry. I, I can't wait to try it. And then I opened up another package. She had remembered that I said my favorite kind of linen is platinum, 36 count platinum. This is it right here. Like this is my fabric. This is my jam. That, weathered shingles, those are the two. But that I'm super excited about because I, when you see what I have coming next week and then what I had ordered at Acorns and Threads, I got the fabric for it already. I'm so excited. And then I opened up the last present and I just started crying. And even Brad, he was standing next to me when I was opening up the presents and he was like, oh, whoa, just quiet, whoa. Cause he, he knows, uh, he knows what this means. Yeah. Look at her finishing. It has feet. Can you see the feet? Mm-hmm. Butterfly, the bows. <clears throat> Look at this, this boutique. It all coordinates. <clears throat> I'm looking at the it's you I like in the thing. It's amazing. She said something like this was, I think in a car or in an email, this was the first thing she'd ever done and she did okay. She did amazing. This finish is amazing. Sheila, thank you so much. This is so beautiful. Y'all, I, I am so blessed by this community. I, I can, it's amazing. This community is so amazing. It gives me so much. You just feel my heart. Um, even the mister has said since since I have found this community, he says, I feel like you are just 
a more whole, complete person. Not that he didn't make me complete, not that I wasn't already made complete, but there's just added, there's more. There's just more to me as a person and how much joy I get out of it. And thank you. Thank you for my beautiful gifts. Thank you, Daylene. Thank you, Patience. Thank you, Sheila. It's just amazing. And I'm so grateful for all of you for thinking of me, for making such beautiful things. I just thank you. I feel awkward so many times because the like I don't feel like thank you is an adequate enough word for the gifts that I have received. And I am so grateful. I can only just do what I can do to help put such kindness back out into the world. Okay, so let's talk Let's talk giveaways um, so that I can get this ended and then I will do a very brief update at the end, real quick life stuff because I, I think the videos, it's long and, and um, I'm not even going to apologize. It just is what it is. Okay, so last week the giveaway was Praise with Worthy Stitches Sale at the Bubbling Cauldron. So I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to set up OBS and uh, or I'm going to set up the camera to where you can watch me get the winner for this. Okay guys, we're gonna go over the last video, number 102. I don't know what that pop-up is. Uh, we are going to paste the link into there and we're gonna fetch it. We want a keyword filter of bubbling. Oops. Uh, you guys did some really great sentences with that. What a hard word to try to figure out comments for. All right, 72 comments, pick a winner. Cindy Flinchbaugh, cauldron or bubbling cauldron is very cute and I would love to stitch it. Great progress on the house. All construction stinks at times. You're not wrong. Sheetrock dust is bad. Keep smiling, pretty lady. It is going to be so great when it is done. Yes, it is. So Cindy, this is yours. Um, let me switch back over to the regular video. Okay, Cindy, so make sure you, I, I don't know if I have your address. I may, I may. If I do, I will pop this in the mail this week. Um, if I don't, just send me a message, things at gmail.com. Hit me up on Facebook. Uh, I think we're friends there, maybe. Um, send me a private message there, Instagram. Uh, just get me your address and I can get this in the mail. Helen Stevenson from last week. I've not mailed out your package yet. I know you're super excited. I still have it. It is going in the mail Monday. Um, I'm going to be generating the label for it tonight or tomorrow. I will get you the tracking number soon. Um, sorry for that loud noise. So this week's giveaway is going to be Teresa Wentzler's The Castle. This one is not the mini or the petite. It is actually this whole pattern. You can see it has the Goodwill sticker, sorry. Um, it has some shelfware, as you can see on the sides. Uh, I checked and the, um, oops. I checked and the the edge of the pattern here, this fold edge and the in, inside fold edge, they're not bad. It's not too worn. You can still see the symbols. And there is a paper um, from inside that has um, data and stuff on it and includes a border. Um, stretch. It has stretch on it. Maybe it's just an extra free pattern or something that came with it. Stretch the magic dragon or maybe it's a border that goes around. I don't know what stretch is, but that's in here. Um, yeah, it's not a border. It must be an extra pattern. I think I've seen someone stitch that. Who stitched that? Was it Leticia? Caroline? Long time ago, someone was stitching that. Um, so next week, uh, just put castle anywhere in your sentence. Uh, you're the queen of your castle, uh, or I just want to stitch the castle. I'll make it easy, right? Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick update. House, house is coming along fine. I'll have some pictures going. Uh, we're not done. Uh, yesterday, we uh, yesterday in the morning, they're replacing soffits um, as they tore soffits down on the backside. They discovered that in between the uh, trusses, uh, you're supposed to have vents all along uh, whoever did the roof last time there's no venting and a lot of the they use osb instead of plywood for the roof and you can see there's tons of water damage you can actually see when you're standing out in the front yard you can see the roof is wavy uh, from where some of the trusses are rotted 
through. We're gonna have to replace the whole roof, uh, not immediately. Uh, we're gonna do probably the vents on top of the roof as opposed to just in between the trusses. It's not surprising news. Uh, we, the mister and I, I will just leave it as the mister and I talked about the possibility of when they took off the siding and, and, and went through the roof that if there was a bunch of dry rot and stuff, the house may end up being something that just has to be raised and start over. That's worst case. Uh, best case was roof is fine, bones of the house uh, uh, were fine. Bones of the house were fine, so we got, we're good with that. Roof, not so fine. So we're, we're not sure right now if we're gonna end up staying a little longer and get it taken care of this year or probably next year. So that's a little up in the air. Probably next year because, you know, bank accounts need to recover from such things, um, but it's okay. Um, they'll probably finish siding maybe this week, we're hoping, and then we have painting and the inside finish work to do. So that's all going on. Uh, by the way, no, we will not be using the same contractor for the roof. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, um, just FYI. Uh, other quick updates, Josh is fine through the hurricane. They evacuated them, uh, gave them a limited evacuation order, an LEO on Monday. Uh, he texts me, I knew they were gonna do it, but I hadn't heard from him. So I asked him, are you evacuating to Fort Jackson with everyone else? And he said, nope because his school and they're off base, they're not required to go to Fort Jackson. They can go anywhere between 100 and 600 miles away. So he tells me I'm going to Nashville. And I'm like, okay, oh, what are you going to Nashville for? Like, why, why Nashville? And I was just like, all right, are, I, I didn't ask him that because he would just be like, oh, none of your business. Um, I just said, okay, let me know when you leave and when you get there. And by the way, are you going by yourself? And he says, no, two of my roommates are going to go and we're going to pick up a friend on the way. So they had a hurricane. They all went to Nashville and they all had a blast. Uh, they were recalled yesterday, Friday. They got the, the LEO is canceled, recall back, and they all got home yesterday. So he had a ball. Uh, one of the kids uh, on the way, they caravan, three cars. Um, he ran his car way too hard blew a head gasket, didn't pay attention to the heat gauge or just didn't understand that when your car starts overheating, you need to pull over and fix it for it. Red lines and his red lined for a while. So he also busted two pistons uh, and it was an older car. So they ended up at some mechanic place outside of Atlanta, east of Atlanta. All I know, because Josh wouldn't tell me, 70 to 80 miles east of Atlanta, sold his car to some mechanic um, who, who took it as it was so he could fix it and sell it, and now this kid doesn't have a car. But they all got back safe. Callie's doing great. She's in California, up in Northern California, has a job at Tanaya Lodge, loves it, has 40-hour work week. Last week messaged me, I just finished my first 40-hour week, I'm exhausted, and I laughed and said, welcome to adulthood, you're gonna love your paycheck. Um, so she's fine, my oldest daughter's fine. Um, I have to say thank you all so much for your comments on uh, on my weight loss, I'm doing really well. Uh, I've, I've sort of skipped the last two milestones. Uh, I hit 30 pounds lost and then I hit 35 and I'd skip them and then go, oh, I'll just, I'll just say it when the next one comes. Um, I'm currently at 37 pounds lost, had the non-scale victory of wearing a size 10 this week. My pants were falling off, y'all. I was walking around and I was like, all right, I'm gonna have to go to the thrift store because I'm not buying new clothes until I get to my goal weight. Uh, and I finally told the mister, I, I have to get a pair of pants that I, I need, can stop hitching up all the time. But I honestly was nervous. I thought that uh, there's no way I'm gonna fit into a 10. I'm in between. Like the 12s are a little too big, but the 10s are gonna be too small. I walked into a dressing room, I put on a pair of size 10 capris and they fit perfect. And I didn't even have to go <gasps> and try to butt my pants. It was amazing. I haven't been in that size for nine years. And the last time I was there was because I was divorced, divorcing, family estrangement, totally stressed, lost weight, like not a healthy way to lose weight. 
uh, this time doing it the healthy way and I just uh, it just was amazing. So he went out thrifting when I was at Acorns and Thrift. He bought two more size 10 Capris at the thrift shop for me. And I was like, oh, they're probably not going to fit. Because they're all different, different brands. All three different brands, different size 10s. I fit into every single one. It was amazing. It was amazing, you guys. Amazing. Um, and I'm just going to say this now, uh, not for any bad reason, but there comes a point when someone who's who's always been kind of a bit overweight and I've, I've done the yo-yo thing my whole life. So I, I, I know what this is. Um, it gets to a point where people who've only known them as, as heavier get a little worried, like mm, you're getting a little too whatever. I'm not at the too thin or too whatever. I'm going to tell you, I was at 195.8 when I started this journey. My personal goal is to get to 135. My doctor's goal wanted for me to get to at least 150, um, but preferred 145. My Weight Watchers goal is 140. So I'm at 158.0 as of today. So like I think 37 pounds down maybe. Um, no. What did I say I was at when I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't focus. Um, so I've got like 13 pounds to go, I think. No, 23 pounds to go to my goal weight, 135. Um, but d don't worry because I've talked to my doctor and she agrees my healthy 135 to 150. So it's going to be okay. Don't become too concerned. Once I get to 135, I'm going to be eating a bacon cheeseburger once a week. We got this. It's all right. So don't worry. Um, but yeah, that's where I am now. Uh, working really hard. Really excited about that. Thank you for all of your comments. You guys have been really nice about noticing that. Um, the mister just got home. You guys know I've been talking forever. I've finally caught you up on everything. So I'm going to go. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Thank you so much for checking in with me every week, spending some time out of your day, choosing to visit with me and my channel. I appreciate it. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week. I will check in with you next week. Don't forget, stitch all the things. Bye.